Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome, welcome again for our another edition of one of our districts um, in the Open Choice Program. We're just so happy to be here uh, with you for this virtual fair. And we have special guests um, today from the Stowe Early Learning Center that's in Enfield, one of our participating districts for our early learners. And here I'll turn it over to Jacqueline to kind of introduce herself and then the rest of the team. Hi everyone, I'm Jacqueline Valley, the Director of Early Childhood Initiatives for Enfield Public Schools. Um, I serve as the Principal for Stowe Early Learning Center and I'm excited for you to hear about our school. Thank Hi everyone, you. I'm Shannon Steary. I'm the Early Childhood Initiative Manager at Stowe, Stowe Early Learning Center and I'm also the Education Manager in Special Education Disability. Thank you, welcome. Hi everyone, I'm Kathy Picuro. I'm the Site Supervisor here at Stowe. Awesome. Thank you all so much for, for joining us for this special event. You know, I, I wish that we were able to have it in person, but we know the times that we're in. So no matter what, I'm glad that um, I, I at least make, get to make this connection with you all virtually to talk about the Early Learning Center and all the great things that you have going on. And with that, you know, how is it that still welcomes our Hartford families uh, to Enfield? May I answer that one? Um... Absolutely. So what happens is we will receive a list of incoming families and I will call them up, introduce myself, welcome them to Snow, and then we would invite them into school for a personal tour, um, either in person or on FaceTime, depending on what they're comfortable with or whichever app works for them. And then the next step is going through the registration process and answering any and all questions and making them feel comfortable in it all. And, I, and I'm also guessing that while they're in that, you know, inquiry phase of, 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 of being uh, introduced to the, to the uh, district, uh, there may be some questions about curriculum, right? How is it that you, you all respond and, and, and let them know what their early learners will be learning when they come to stuff? We are STEAM theme pre-K program. So we use a district developed curriculum and it's infused with Project Lead the Way. Each unit is designed to build upon the previous one. All areas of development are integrated into the day and each classroom environment is intentionally designed to support predict predictability, independence, student engagement, and the development of executive function skills. Um, some of these units include exploring inquiry, this provides students with a foundation in inquiry-based teaching and learning, as well as the engineering and design process. The students become familiar with asking questions, solving problems, and working collaboratively to understand how the world works. We have a steering and engineering unit, which provides students with a deeper understanding of building structures in their community and around the world, and how to keep structures stable, what causes them, and they rebuild and redesign and work together. We also have Matter Matters, where students explore properties of matter in the context of their classroom, as well as the play scenario around space. They learn about texture, density, they experiment, and cause and effect are embedded into this unit. We also have a decoding coding unit. Uh, coding is a basic literacy um, in the digital age, and coding helps children with communication, creativity, math, and writing and confidence. The students will learn what sequence is, how to give and follow simple directions, and how to create a map. We also have a recycling unit and the recycling environmental responsibility focuses on how to reduce, reuse and recycle materials. The students will also explore where the trash goes after we throw it away and how we can reduce our trash um, consumption. And the students will engage in multiple activities that focus on what recycling is and how to be an active participant in the recycling process. And our last unit is the bones and stones. And in this unit, we, are, we have a dinosaur theme um, it's our learning scenario that's embedded into the unit and the concepts are living and non-living things. The students will facilitate the construction of a, a paleontology center around the room. The students will investigate characteristics of living and non-living things as they take on roles specific to each area of the learning scenario. And these roles can include a museum, a research scientist, a geologist, a field paleontologist, and the unit expands upon students' exploration of characteristics by having them explore habits of living and non-living things. And students will develop an understanding about living and, and living things need to survive. Great, great. And you know, I've, I've had the opportunity to visit 
of the Stowe Learning Center before and see some of the interactive things that you all have um, going on for the students and the, the engagement, the, the loving and caring environment that you all to provide to students. Um, and so, you know, with that, and also empowering our students to, to end their inquiry, right? Whether they're like, oh my goodness, uh, I'm learning. The parents are like, my child is learning, but what else, what other opportunities are there for students to take um, advantage of outside of the curriculum? I will answer that one. So at the pre-K level, we don't have um, extracurriculars or clubs per se, but we do offer an abundance of family engagement opportunities um, in both the Enfield and Hartford communities. The Hartford Public Library is one of our um, strongest partners and we um, take staff with us on the road and we head to Hartford. We invite families from both communities. We do literacy nights. Um, we can bring a sink and float night, for example. We can do a get your first library card so that your kiddos can check out books. Um, in the beautiful Harvard Public Library. Um, and then any activities that they offer as a library, we offer to our families, whether it's, we, or we promote it so that you have the opportunity to attend. Um, any opportunities that we offer in this moment may be in person or virtual, depending on public health data and people's feelings of health and safety. Um, and we also offer lots of take home materials and planned activities for families to engage with, um, as well as any activities and opportunities that are offered by any community partner or agency located within the surrounding area. We always share it out. Um, additionally, we have a strong partnership with the Connecticut Science Center. Um, we often invite them to join our family educator organization meetings and present um, a fun, engaging activity for families. We send home the materials, they give the instructions, they facilitate the meeting, and then anyone who attends gets um, tickets to the Science Center. Nice, nice, nice. I love it, you know, um, and with that, I myself, I'm in infield quite often. I think it's a straight, it's a straight shot, right? Um, right up 91. For those families who, who may say, oh my goodness, infield, right? How do you all support families or respond to families when they talk about the distance from Hartford to infield? And you know, Curtis, you're right. It is a straight shot. Um, however, when you work with families who have young children, this can be a really tough thing to wrap your head around and really kind of conceptualize sending your little one on a bus um, that far away. So this is something we've placed a high priority on this year, working with current and former families. We're currently working with a family who has a child enrolled through Open Choice in our program this year. Um, the amazing bus drivers who transport our kiddos and our marketing coordinator to create a video demonstrating the bus experience. So we've been able to have um, one of our families video their child's experience and their experience as a parent of greeting their child off the bus and um, on our end, we videotaped our kiddos getting on the bus and we talked to our bus drivers about um, the experience, what they value, um, how they perceive the experience as the driver. Um, and hopefully when we share that, that will help alleviate some of that stress. Um, I also think just get in the car and take a ride to Enfield and see how it is and put your little one in the car, talk about the things that you see um, and time it. If it's something that feels manageable to you, okay, if it's not, we can talk about it. Um, but I will say that it's closer than you think. It sounds further away. For sure, for sure. And uh, you know, <clears throat> it sounds like that's also part of that transitional piece, right? Uh, it is. To get acclimated um, into a new district, into the new school. Uh, what are, some ways in addition to taking that ride that you mentioned that families can also do to support the transition of their their early learner into school yeah so um we do recognize how hard it is curtis um it, it absolutely is a scary thing to send your child to school period because it's all new um so we establish lines of communication from day one so we encourage you once kathy reaches out um we ask you to share the best way to reach you, whether that's by um, text message, phone call, email, FaceTime, however you feel comfortable communicating with us. Um, and then you know that we let you know that this is our phone number and you can reach us this way and you can call throughout the day. You can check in, has the bus arrived? I'm not really sure it left kind of late and I'm just feeling nervous. Um, we can do teacher check-ins so that you, you know, if you want a picture of your kiddo getting off the bus, we'll send you a picture because that's what you need to know that your child is safe at school. Um, if a bus is running late leaving school or there happens to be inclement weather, an accident, we make contact with you so that you can be prepared on your end. Um, and then just ask as many questions as you like. We're here, our door is open. We 
appreciate every question that you have. We honor that you are a parent and you are concerned and you know your child best. So that transition piece would be coming in and starting the relationship and the conversation, sharing the best method of contact, and then staying in constant communication with us. Yes, and and, and within that communication, uh, if I was a, a, a parent and I just needed just that extra, like somebody to reach out and touch, so to say, you know, you know what folks are available to support them or who, they, who should they go to? And you know what, Curtis, I love that question because our school has so many things going on in it that it can feel overwhelming. Like, who do I call? What number do I call? How can I reach the person I really need? So for classroom support, we always say you start with the teacher. If it's a question you have specific to the classroom, um, you will have your teacher's contact information in the beginning of the year. And that would be the person to start with for health and wellness support. Any COVID, I, I don't mean to bring it up, but any COVID concerns, you would start with our nurse, Jennifer Mayer, um, and you will have her number because we send home um, magnets that look like this that have everybody's important phone numbers on it and a QR code so that you can access things easily. Um, for outside family supports, including resources for challenging behaviors, food insecurity, housing, mental health, etc., you start with Kathy, our lovely site supervisor, um, and she will put you in touch with um, a social worker that we have on site who can connect um, all of you with resources if we don't have the resources ourselves. And for logistical support, such as transportation, transition to kindergarten, et cetera, you can start with the site supervisor. Um, but any of us are happy to answer any questions. Don't be afraid that you're calling the wrong number. We can easily connect you to the other person, um, but we will make sure that everyone who comes here has all the numbers and the names that they need and when to reach out to which person for what. Yes, and the really great thing for those who are, are tuning in is that in addition to the really great staff, um, that is available up at Stowe. Uh, you also have a Hartford-based team uh, located in Hartford as well. We have our, our um, elementary resource specialist, Kim Guzzo, and we have our, our family engagement specialist, Carla Cruz as well. So in addition to the school-based team, you also have um, a local team, again, just in case um, if there's any uh, uh, distance barrier or anything like that. So that's something that's really awesome and available to all of our open choice families as well. And so with that, if somebody is sitting here like, oh my goodness, I, I want to go see Stowe, uh, I want to uh, learn more, who um, would they contact uh, for a tour? Well, they could call here and I would love to give the tour to anyone, any of us would, but we are more than thrilled to have people call, email, thanks time, like I said, whatever we can do to make them comfortable, we absolutely will. Um, when school's in session, it's a little difficult during COVID, so we try to schedule tours, tours before school or after school. But other than that, we're so flexible and we will work around the families and make them happy. Nice, nice. And, you know, I've gotten to know the info community quite a bit. I'm Again, I'm up there active um, um, as well uh, on some community organizations, right? And so I know um, and I love the infill community and you all have been so consistent with the work that you do in infill. But for our viewers, why should they choose Stowe as number one in their application for the little one? Because we make a difference. Um, <laughs> we, um, we're very fortunate that our district is a pre-K through 12 theme theme um, school system. So we start at preschool and it carries on all through um, till they graduate and move on. Um, we have a strong alignment in our curriculum and in our instruction and our family engagement. And we provide a variety of opportunities for our students to grow individually and in their strengths and be supportive of them, um, especially being their first year, their first experience um, coming to school. It's scary, it's new. Um, and we just give them the opportunities and support them individually. Um, and we value the diversity that each family brings to our school community and we honor the family as the child's first teacher and essential partner. So yes, we're their teachers, but their parents are their first and most important teachers. So we, collaboration is so important to us. So like working with the families is very important to us and we're the first people that they walk into the building with. So. Great, great, great. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Shannon. I appreciate you all so much for this opportunity to just come, connect, uh, talk about um, Still Learning Center and, and Enfield, right? And so I know that 
Folks, if you're watching and you want to choose Enfield as your first choice in the application, just visit choosecrec.org and Enfield will be listed right there. You click and you apply through the, the RESCO application. And of course, our Welcome Center staff is available, bilingual staff as well, for any uh, questions that you might have and extra assistance. So please feel free to make an appointment at the Welcome Center or give them a call at 860-509-3700. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us and be well.